Yeah, awesome. Right, I'm going to stop you. Henry, and you come. Hello, we were just about to talk about you. Come in the middle. You come in the middle. So you're the superstar. I was actually just chatting to your dad. Oh, yeah? Up in the he said his, it was your dad. Your dad's here, London Irish jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Racing 92 Norse, cap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Norse. Yeah, he was loving it, though. He was obviously very happy to see you play. How are you getting on, mate? Firstly, commiserations about yes, the result. Yeah. So it's a difficult one, I know, to come out of the changing room. So to come and chat to us is awesome. How are you, mate? Very well. Yeah, I'm good. Um, very so. fast. <laughs> Yeah, not fast enough sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's a quiet change room at the moment. Um, yeah, we had to win that, and to be up that score, you know, we got, we did it. We've done it in the top four team where we've been up and then managed to lose. It's part of controlling the game. A new team that needs to learn how to do that. Um, so yeah, pretty gutted at the moment. Yeah. So in a team that you're in now, where there is different cultures, obviously the great Sia Khaleesi, yeah. uh, Springbok captains in there yourself, different influences, Stuart Lancaster being the coach as well. I know Laurent Travers is still there uh, for a French director point of view. How are the conversations had in a changing room like that? Is it French? Is it English? Like who's who's leading the charge in there? Uh, Stuart very much leads it. Um, but he's he's head coach, he's like directing it. Um, everyone listens to him and everyone really respects you know what he's done and uh, everything he's gonna do and what he has done for us as well as Leinster and obviously England. Um, you know it's it's such good value having that diversity where you've got international captains, you've got um, multiple, like multi cap internationals, you know, Gail Fiku, for example, um, our captain today, but Henry Chavonsu, who's been here for years, um, Sia, and that leadership's brilliant, and it's now learning to all move in the right direction, not having different voices. Uh, that's something that's going really well, it's just now doing it on the pitch every week especially in Europe, because that's the toughest competition. Yeah, well, me and Francois were talking about the history that Racing have got in the tournament, making three finals, the investment that they make, the quality of players, that the big kind of step for them now, I know you're top of the top 14, is the Investing Champions Cup. You're not out. I was chatting to Martin Bayfield, so don't go based on this. There's still a chance. Okay, you're yeah. telling me there's a chance. I don't judge it. Well done, mate. Good win, Bath. But yeah, there's still a chance, though, yes, for you yes, to, okay, in yeah. this competition. But you've re-signed. Yep. Congratulations. I want to get into that. I know it's a, a top... We were messaging on Instagram, weren't <laughs> yeah, we, about yeah. getting them on the Big Shim Show as a podcast. <laughs> so I've got you now. So it's the race. <laughs> the race to get it out there. There was talk of you coming here. Yeah. There was, would have been a big pull for you to come back to the Premiership for obvious reasons around England. Just give us an idea of why you chose to stay in Paris. Yeah. And at the minute, unless we convince Steve and the powers that be that closing the door on England. Just give us an idea on your decision making around that. Yeah, I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's closing the door on England. It's still, I'm very much want to play for England. It's just unfortunately the rules don't allow it. And for me right now, I think the best thing for my rugby and my future is development, not necessarily playing for England all the time. Because whilst it's fantastic and I love it, is it the best thing for my development at the moment? You know, I'm still very young. I need to learn the nuances of the game and you know the coach that I have and the assistant coaches. You know, Joe Rockadoko, Fred Michelak. The guys that have been there, done that as players. Um, and then likewise, the players we've mentioned, you know, there's more to rugby than just the skill, you know, learning off Sia, um, you know, outside of rugby and um, even leadership stuff, you know, I'm, whilst I'm young, I want to be able to lead eventually at some point when I'm in a team and have influence on a culture. Um, but yeah, for me, it's very much a development focus and in three years, I'll 100% be back to England to play and put myself forward for that 27 World Cup. That's awesome that you're talking like that. And I don't know how transparent you want to be as a young man. And me and Francois will carry on the conversation after. You look at the South African players playing all over the world, yeah. go back to play in the spring box on these four-year cycles and win the World Cup back-to-back -back three times champions. So as a young man, if you've got picked to play for England, you want to play, right? So you're not just close yes, as yeah, you're, yeah. you're, you do. Yeah. So because there's, a bit, there's talk, obviously Owen Farrell, there's talk of him yeah. coming to Racing as well. Do you think they should be open, they should be receptive to potentially looking because of the way that your club folded. Yes, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So I know the hand was forced in that move and then you move to Racing goes well and then there's talking about you being Paul Pillar supposed to come back. Mm. But how do you feel about that? Do you feel like it shouldn't, the door shouldn't be closed? Are you comfortable enough to say that and tell us that? I 100% understand why they do it. And it makes complete sense, you know. You've got to look after your domestic league and you want the best players playing in the domestic league, you know. My experience now playing in the top 14 every week, every club we go to, every, all the fan bases, as soon as they see Gail Ficker and Cameron Wocky, it's, you know, it's massive, it's paparazzi, it's everything, they love it. You know, fans want to talk to all of them. Um, and that should be the same here. You know, England internationals should be the biggest faces in this league and I understand why they do it. Um, obviously now I'm going to say, yeah, I'd love it if they opened it up because for me there's an argument where 
you know, so I'm really cold, I'm shivering. That's no, it's fine. I, I didn't know whether you were nervous or cold. <laughs> no, but no, I'm, I'm really cold. Well. I'm old though. That's why. Um, there's a side of it where there's a difference between signing a contract and actually doing it. Um, you know, I'm, I came here when I was 20, single guy, not to do anything. I haven't got family to move across. You know, it's very easy for me to just leave the country and come back. You know, some guys have got families and their wives have jobs and careers here. They can't just move straight away. So that's where my argument would be, how much would it actually change? But I understand why they do it. And have you had the conversation with Steve? So when you put pen to paper, I don't know if you're left-handed, but that's just the free hand yeah, at the yeah, minute. Yeah. But when you put pen to paper, and there was talk about you coming to Bath, right? Yes, there was yeah, big yeah. conversations around that. Did you include the England chat with that, with Steve? Did you say, look, this is what I'm thinking. Is there still a chance you could pick me for England? Or did yeah, he say, look, I did, yeah. What did he, he say? Well, it's obviously a private conversation. I don't want to say too much out of respect for him. Um, but he you know, fully wants me to play for England, and I've got so much respect for him and obviously, you know, picking me. You know, it, it takes a lot to actually get picked and for him to trust me and to take me to a World Cup was incredible. Um, so, I mean, we had a very good conversation. I said to him, this is purely development and this three-year period or three-year contract is not for me to just enjoy playing in France and the croissants every day. It's to get better for England. So when I come back, I'm a better player for England. You know, I wasn't, when I was playing for England, I wasn't the best player I could be and there's no reason why I should be the best player I should be. I was 20, 21. Um, and even now, I'm still learning a lot and playing in the big games, playing top 14 each week where every game is massive and you have to win. That's, that's where you learn. Um, you learn to fail and you learn to get better and maybe avoid that English media side of things um, that can sometimes have a big influence on young players. So for me, it's, I'll be here there for three years, three-year contract and then come back and hopefully be in the best position possible to be picked for England and offer the best for England. Yeah, absolutely. Mate, you're a class act, big fan. Thanks, man. Consciously you need to go and cheat codes of rugby as well. Some of the clips, <laughs> Francois, absolutely unbelievable. Thank Henry. Cheers, mate. Go and have a beer with your dad as well. Bad luck today. Cheers, mate. Cheers. I think we've got another player coming in as well. So we could do. I think yeah, you, you can ask Ben the questions. 